Hello, I've been using this FR Sky LiPo voltage checker and it's uh, actually a, some sort of a smart port thing you can see on there. It works with SBUS to send telemetry back about each cell to your transmitter if you're using a Tyrannus or something like that. But the only thing I've been using it for is to check the voltage of my LiPos and I really like it for doing that because it's much quicker than those other LCD screen ones where you have to wait for it to show you the voltage of each cell. Well, this one, you just plug it in and it, well, they all pop up immediately. Well, not immediately, but within a second or so, you can see all of the cells at the same time. And it doesn't make that really loud beep that those other ones do when they start up as well. But unfortunately, as you can see on the screen there, uh, I stood on it a couple of days ago and now it doesn't work. So I thought, oh, no worries, I'll just buy another one on Banggood. But they were out of stock. So then I thought, you know, it's not that difficult to make one, I would think. Not as sophisticated one as this. But I've been playing around with uh, just a simple circuit here. These numbers are not not adjusted or anything. I, I only have three cells on there. I'll eventually want to do four. Um, but to make a very simple circuit with no safety protections or anything, one that you're going to absolutely have to make sure that you plug it in the right polarity. Um, otherwise, it will blow up the Arduino. So that's what I've got here. And... Um, I'll just show you the circuit that I'm going to use for this. Um, so it's pretty simple, and so there's no diodes or transistors or any cunning things to stop it from being blown up if it's connected up the wrong way. On the other hand, that does make it very easy to build, and I only need six resistors, which is quite nice. And the values of those resistors I've come up with by um, saying for a 5-volt five, five Arduino, you want to use a voltage divider that's going to bring each one of those cell voltages down to about 4 volts, you want it to be, make sure it's going to be under 5 volts so that it's sort of a little bit on the safe side, we'll say we're targeting 4. Um, for the first cell, that should only be up to 4.2 volts total, so I'm just going to pass that directly through to one of the analog pins on the Arduino. And apparently those analog pins on the Arduino have a, a mega ohm level resistance or impedance, so it should be safe just to connect that straight up without any kind of resistors in the circuit. And then for the next one, so for example, the next one will be two cells, so that's 8.4 volts. And if we want to make that go to 4, that is roughly a ratio of 1 to 2. So my resistors I've chosen for that, uh, that lane of the path is going to be 1K and 1K. Uh, so the lower of these is going to be where I'm going to connect my analog input to and that will make a total of 2k for that whole path and 8.4 volts over 2000 ohms is roughly 4 milliamps and so the rest of the the other two lanes are calculated in pretty much the same way um, actually this 2k is a 2.2k um, but the other ones are actually 1k and 3k that I managed to find um, so yeah I'm just gonna put this all together and I thought I might share the sketch and make a video while I'm doing it. And I have a little plastic case somewhere that I can't locate at the moment, but I'll find that and I'll try and put everything into that case. It's not going to be as small and as compact or as sophisticated as this one, but I think it will do the job if I just remember not to plug it in the wrong way. Oh, yep, that will fit nicely. So here's that circuit soldered up, well most of it anyway. I bought some epoxy glue the other day, so I thought I might go for a messy cludge approach and use epoxy to uh, insulate the connections, keep them apart from each other, and make it a bit more rugged so I can just sort of throw it in my bag and not have to treat it too gently. And here's what it's going to look like in the case. It's just sitting in there at the moment. I don't have much more vertical room, so I might be a little bit squashed once this goes on and then the top goes on but I think I can make it work the little glass piece of these screens protrudes a little bit from the PCB so I might use my CNC machine to cut a rectangle out of the bottom of the case or well, the top of the case in just the right shape so that I can place this in here it fits in here quite well vertically and then the screen will be visible from the outside, which is kind of the whole point of it.
Okay, time to fire this up. I really hope I got everything right, otherwise this is going to ruin the Arduino if I get it wrong, but yeah, look at that. Um, so I have to figure out how to adjust these now. Okay, I'm just figuring out the necessary adjustments to get the right numbers showing up here. And initially I kind of naively thought that you might be able to do some clever algebra and um, get the correct result without actually having to measure these resistors, but no, there's just too many unknowns. So I used my voltmeter to measure the actual resistances of these so that we know the ratio on each side. Um, you need a pretty decent volt me um, multimeter to do that, but fortunately mine goes to four digits, so I was able to measure those. And um, next I measured with the voltmeter the values from ground to each of the cells. Uh, so that's across, you know, from ground to cell one, ground to cell two, ground to cell three, like that. And the values I got were these. So these are the correct values. And then um, after multiplying the normal analog read value by the correct ratio, these are my resistance values here, the actual resistances. Um, so these are supposed to be 1K, so they're actually like this. <laughs> Let me get that right. Yeah, that's right. Um, anyway, so if I use this ratio to to get the correct actual voltage, um, these are what I observed. So they're all a little bit smaller than the actual values that we should see. So two cells, I was seeing 7.49 when it's supposed to be a little bit higher. So the ratio of this to this is going to be something like this. They all turned out to be almost the same, actually, 1.004 something. So in the source code, I have, um, let's see the source code. And... In the source code here, um, we'll just quickly look at this. We, we're taking a moving average of s the last 16 samples. So every 100 milliseconds we update the screen, we take a sample or we, up, we refresh our moving average. And then we use our resistance values to get the correct voltage. And down here I've just commented it out now. Um, but you need to multiply the voltage by whatever this correction factor is and then to so that's what I'm that's what I have at the moment this commented out version and we'll just have a look at that so this is the values that I was showing you here uncorrected at this point and it might pay to use a fairly large battery to do this because if you spend quite a while doing it, the battery may drain out a bit if it's a small battery, but I have a pretty big one here, it should be okay. Um, so anyway, I'll upload the sketch with the corrected um, ratio so we can see that we're actually getting what matches what I saw on the voltmeter. And when it starts up again, here we go. So now we should be seeing this column here on the left, approximately. Um, you can actually easily make it show more digits than this, but I found them to be flicking around all the time. It was kind of distracting. So I just left it at two decimal places, and it doesn't do too much flickering in that situation. But now we have pretty much the right voltages on there. So now all we have to do to show a per cell voltage is subtract, uh, for example, to show voltage of the last cell, we subtract the previous cells from it. So it'll be 15.8 minus 11.29. So that's the only other thing that is in the source code that I've commented out here. So let me just put that in and upload that. And now we should actually see the per cell voltages and it should be 3.76, 3.77, 3.76 and 3.77 according to my battery charger. So it's about 0 0.01 volts off on a couple of them and I think I'm just gonna leave it at that because that's about as accurate as I need it really. 
most of the time what I'm doing is I'm checking that my batteries are equal to each other or not the cells of each battery before I charge them in parallel so it's not quite so important that I'm getting the exact voltage down to the hundredth of a volt correct but what I do want to see is that all my batteries are the same as each other so for that purpose this voltage checker should do just fine incidentally it looks like if you use a battery that has less than four cells the missing cells will cause a negative number to show up there so it might be pretty easy just to not display any negative numbers and um, let me just give that a try there we go that was easy enough so now if it's three cells it's only going to show three lines and if it's two cells it's only going to show two lines um, if it's less than two cells it doesn't run of course I should have mentioned that at the beginning because you need to have higher than a five volts voltage coming into the raw pin of the Arduino and amazingly that all fit into the case just fine <laughs> I was thinking I might have to take those FTDI pins off to get it to shut, but it, um, yeah, it shut without having to do that. So I guess that's the end of the video, really. I mean, not really too much else to say. I still have a little bit of work to do to get this. I'm pretty sure I can get this screen to line up a little bit straighter. It's kind of uh, dipping down there. And then I'll either hot glue or epoxy it together because it's just sort of a bit wobbly at the moment. Uh, so I want to make it a bit more rugged. But as far as functionality goes, it's um, it's working. Just have to push it in a little bit gently there, and uh, four cells over here. Yep, there it is. Anyway, hope that was interesting. <laughs> Thanks for watching.